America strikes. The Biden administration carrying out a mass series of airstrikes in both Iraq and Syria. And I want to show you some new video that we have just gotten in of what's happening there on the ground. This is the aftermath of one of the strikes. The U.S. hit, we understand, 85 targets. You can actually see this uh, in the air. You can see the strikes on the ground uh, from this video here. And you can hear... And you can hear it as well as those uh, on those impacts. U.S. hitting Iranian-backed militants uh, who were responsible for the drone attack in which three American soldiers were killed and dozens more were injured uh, in Jordan. According to the U.S. Central Command, U.S. forces hit seven locations. According to the White House, the strikes lasted 30 minutes. Now, they are characterizing this as successful. But I want to be clear when we say that, that would seem to imply that there's success and they're done and it's nowhere near the truth. President Biden is clearly warning tonight that this is just the beginning. The statement that he put out says, quote, our response began today. It will continue at times and places of our choosing. The United States does not seek conflict in the Middle East or anywhere else in the world. Now, while Biden says the U.S. does not seek conflict in the Middle East, the leader of one of the Iranian-backed militias today vowed to continue attacking U.S. targets. All right, well, this breaking news coverage here continues as we see what happens in these early hours of the morning in Iraq and Syria. We've got a team of correspondents, military analysts, standing by for our breaking coverage. I want to begin, though, with Oren Lieberman because he is live at the Pentagon. Oren, you have been learning more and more details about these strikes. What do you know now? The U.S. carried out strikes across seven different locations, strikes that were carried out over a period of 30 minutes. Four of those locations were in Syria. Three of them were in Iraq. It appears one of them you're seeing here, although at this time the Pentagon and the Defense Department not confirming the locations, but Qaim in Iraq is a location they have struck before. Meanwhile, the director of the Joint Staff here, General D.A. Sims, says that they are confident in the success of their strikes and in the targeting. In terms of the list of targets, 85 different targets across those seven locations, more than 125 precision munitions used. In terms of what was struck, it's not just weaponry, but it's also command and control centers, intelligence centers, logistics hub, a clear attempt here to go after the ability of these Iranian-backed militias to continue carrying out attacks on U.S. forces. There is no expectation that the attacks will absolutely stop, but the goal of the administration here was to send a more powerful message than has been sent in the past. This is the first time we've seen the U.S. carry out strikes in Iraq and Syria simultaneously. So that's part of the more powerful message we were expecting and the more powerful strikes. The U.S. says they did see secondary explosions at some of the locations that were struck, indicating they did hit weapons facilities in their attempt to go after some of the weapons that have been used to attack U.S. forces. The Biden administration, the president himself, the defense secretary have promised there would be a powerful response after its drone strike killed three U.S. service members and injured scores more in Jordan on Sunday. So five days ago, the U.S. held Iran ultimately responsible, but it was a decision to strike the Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Syria, the groups that have been carrying out these attacks. That was the thrust of tonight's operation. As you point out, President Joe Biden said this isn't the end. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin echoed those words when he said in a statement shortly after the attack, this is the start of our response. So very much putting on the table that though these strikes were larger than others we've seen, there is more to come. Aaron, I will also point out that the U.S. used two B-1 bombers in this case. Those are heavy bombers, much larger than the F-15 and F-16 fighter jets we have generally seen used to carry out these strikes, able to carry a larger payload. That in and of itself is part of the message here that the U.S. is willing to go further than it's gone before in going after these militias and in targeting with these militias. Uh, the U.S. also says there are likely casualties as a result of these strikes. I think that was to be expected. But in terms of how many and where, the U.S. says it went after Islam, uh, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. And we'll find out more at the conclusion of a battle damage assessment. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Orrin. Orrin, as Orrin, you get more. Uh, obviously, we're going to br bring you back. Orrin's there at the Pentagon talking to his sources. Uh, so we'll, we'll let him continue to do that. I want to go to the White House now and MJ Lee. So, MJ, you know, here we are, as, as Orrin's saying, uh, a, a true show of force, right? B-1 bombers coming from the U.S. Uh, to do this, not using F-16s, uh, F-15s. Uh, there's a very clear message here and a very clear message that this is just the beginning. So what does that mean? in terms of this being just the beginning. What are you learning? 
for right now, Aaron, the White House is trying to make clear that they believe the strikes so far have been very successful. Uh, but importantly, Aaron, a senior administration official telling me that the U.S. strikes are targeting places outside of Iran and not inside Iran. And in many ways, uh, that is not at all success. Uh, that is not at all uh, surprising, uh, given to what extent U.S. officials in recent days have been telegraphing just how escalatory that would be to strike targets inside of Iran. And they have said that that would actually be akin to basically starting a war with Iran and the White House has said repeatedly we do not want to start a war with Iran. Uh, now in terms of the timing and why the strikes uh, took place uh, tonight we are actually told uh, that they had known for some days that they would begin tonight uh, but that weather really played a very big role in all of this. Uh, they wanted to make sure that they could avoid any unnecessary casualties though as Oren just mentioned there are expected to be some casualties. They also wanted to avoid cloud cover. In other words Put simply, they waited for good weather to maximize uh, their chances of success and having the best chance of having these uh, precision strikes be as precise uh, as possible. Now, the president, of course, uh, has been updated uh, throughout these strikes. He is currently at his home uh, in Wilmington. Uh, we know that these strikes uh, had everything to do with the three Americans that were killed last weekend, and he made very clear in his statement, as you mentioned, uh, he said, our response began today, but it will continue at times and places of our choosing. But I can imagine, Aaron, for right now, U.S. officials not indicating in any way when or where those future strikes will be. Aaron. All right. MJ, thank you very much. And as MJ talks to her sources, she will come back as well. I want to go now to retired Army Lieutenant General Mark Kirtling and Kareem Sajapur, Iran policy expert at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Thanks so much to both of you. General, we now have the first video in of these strikes, uh, at least of one of them, indications of some secondary explosions, right, which could mean, uh, you know, obviously weaponry or, you know, explosives that were struck. Um, you're, you we're understanding there are B-1 bombers involved that can carry heavy payloads uh, that instead of F-16s or F-15s. From what you know, and obviously we're told this is just the beginning, but what we know so far, 125 precision munitions using B-1 bombers flying all the way from the U.S. mainland. What does it say to you? Well, first of all, Aaron, I, I will confirm that that photo or those films you're showing right now are definitely secondary explosions from an ammo cache, just the way the rockets are coming off. But when you're talking about a B-1 bomber, that, that bomber can drop more bombs than even a B-52. Many people will find that unimaginable. But the strike took 30 minutes. That tells me there wanted to be a, uh, a simultaneous engagement on all those targets to somewhat put uh, the, the various targets that they hit uh, in just an unbelievable state, how fast they can be hit by this one load of, of weaponry. Secondly, uh, anyone that's saying this is a proportional response really doesn't know what they're talking about. This is the first stage, and it's more than proportional, of sending a signal not just to the, uh, the uh, popular mobilization forces on the ground in Syria and Iraq, but also to the Iranian government. This is telling them we are coming after you. We will not put up with these continual harassing attacks that truthfully we've been putting up with before the 7th of October. This is something the Iranian government has been supporting for years, if not decades, against U.S. forces and against Israel as well. This is the reason for those uh, for those PMS to exist is to continue to be the the axis of attacks against the Israel and all Western forces. So I believe what we're seeing right now is the first first set, the first set of this campaign. There will be more. It will fall into an action by the United States, uh, an anticipated reaction by the Iranian government, as well as some of the PMS, and then a counteraction to follow on that. I think it will last at least uh, uh, several days, if not weeks, but it, it will show them that we're serious about protecting our forces in the Middle East. Kareem, obviously, as General Hurtling's referring to, right, the, the, the response of the Iranian government is what matters, even though these strikes are in Iraq and Syria, specifically against uh, Iranian-backed militias. Uh, you know, Reuters had reported a couple days ago that the IRGC, uh, the, the, you know, the uh, elite uh, Iranian uh, force, had been pulling officers out of Syria. They were saying because of Israeli strikes that had been successful, but that they had taken losses, raises the question perhaps of whether they anticipated something like this. We have no idea who these casualties are or what happened. So how do you expect uh, the Iranian government, Kareem, to reply, uh, respond now? 
You know, Aaron, this month marks the 45th anniversary of the Iranian, Iranian Revolution of 1979. So we basically have a 45-year case study of Iranian conduct. And I would say that on one hand, this is a regime which is deeply committed to its ideology. It wants to evict America from the Middle East. It wants to replace Israel with Palestine. It wants to help bring down the US-led world order. But they're also deeply committed to staying in power. They're not suicidal. They're very good at testing US resolve, um, uh, constantly testing US red lines. I suspect that now what they're going to do given this massive U.S. response, is to lay low a little bit. Um, I, I, I suspect we won't see um, attacks in the near term on U.S. troops. But once we're again distracted, whether it's by our presidential elections or the war in Ukraine, mm. I think they will start to test us again because, again, they're committed to their ideology.